matter and all day today. Been on my heart. You need to understand tonight that God has a plan and you're really in it. You really are. You may not even be aware of it, but when you were in the bed asleep, he was awake. Things were moving on your behalf. God was doing things for your benefit. I want to give you a verse of scripture tonight out of the gospel according to John. Chapter number 10 and verse number 10. I want you to listen to it tonight. The Bible said, The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. Now, we all know who the thief is, don't we? Yeah. We all know we have an adversary, the devil, that walketh about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. And if the devil is not bothering you, then you're on his side. Somebody say amen. But Jesus said, I am come that they might have what? Life. And that they might have it more abundantly. Now do you think for one moment that the Lord saved you to make you less? I say not. He saved you to make you more. Can I say that to you again? He didn't save you to make you an underdog. He saved you to make you an overcomer. Amen. He didn't save you to let you live cursed. He saved you that you might be blessed. Amen. He didn't save you that you might be defeated, but He saved you that you might live in victory. Amen. He didn't save you that you might be depressed. But he saved you that you might be excited. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm excited. Are you excited tonight about serving the Lord? Are you excited tonight about serving the Lord? I want to live an uncommon life. I want to live the kind of life, my friend, that I wake up with joy in my heart. There are days and moments in my life that I wake up and the instant that I wake up, I start to have a migraine headache. You ever had one of those days? Yeah. It begins as a excited morning night. <laughs> and it winds up as a BC evening. <laughs> and then you go to bed with an ibuprofen night. And it doesn't get any better. But I want you to know, thank God, we need to understand that weeping may endure for the night. But thank God, joy always comes in the morning. Now. Got an email from a lady just a few days ago that had been praying for her husband 28 years. They own a large commercial fishing boat in Nova Scotia. There that Sunday morning, she got up and it was time for our live church service in China Grove, little country church. She'd been watching us for many, many months and a long time. Her husband never would watch. He didn't want to hear that old slobbering crazy preacher run up down the aisle and scream and all that. He said... He had a lot of critical things to say. But that Sunday morning, they had a big gale wind to come up here a few weeks back. They couldn't send all the boats out that Sunday morning. His boat couldn't go out either. They were pushing big waves and a big storm, and they couldn't even get off of the boat. They had to stay on the boat. They had to stay docked and stay on the boat. And she said, Preacher, I don't know how, we couldn't hardly get any communication at all. But she said somehow or the other, I just thought I would turn my laptop and I pulled up your Sunday morning worship service and when I pulled it up, she said, I don't know why, but you were standing on top of the communion table in front of the pulpit at your church and when the screen come on, you, you pointed straight at that camera and said, yes, sir, you were drunk last night, but Jesus is putting you under conviction today. She said, 
my husband set up for that bunk and said, Lord, have mercy. He knew what I was doing. <laughs> said after 28 years, after 28 years of me praying for my husband, you got down to the end of that service and you said, if you're lost today, while the staff comes to the front of this building, step out of that aisle and come to the front of this building. By faith, ask Jesus to save you. Then you point at that camera again. They draw it up real close. And you said, sir, I'm talking to you. <laughs> get out of that bed. Get down to that bed on that knee. Say, Jesus, I'm a sinner. I don't want to go to hell. She said, Preacher, I turned around and I heard my husband praying. And I heard him calling on God. And said, I got down there beside of him. And said, The Lord saved him. You see what I'm telling you? When you least expect it, my friend, God knows how to give you victory in the midnight of your life. In the darkest day of your life. In the greatest storm of your life. It's never been about us, but it's always been about Him. Amen. Somebody ought to say amen. amen. Give you something about, about the seven qualities of victory. Look at your neighbor and say, I want to live in victory. The Bible said in Jeremiah chapter 1 and in verse number 5, the Bible said, Behold, I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. You know, God said before you was even born, before you was even born, I had a path for your life. I say this to you today, God don't make all of us the same. He makes all of us different. Yep. My wife likes everything stir fried. I don't even like what I eat to touch each other. <laughs> Amen. You just mix all hers up and fry it one still. I don't mind. I don't even I don't even want it cooked in the same grease or the same pot. Now she brawls at and steams everything she eats. I won't mind fried in the cast iron skillet in the lard. Somebody say it, man. And then baptize it in gravy. Hallelujah. That's right. Yeah, man. Somebody said, how many cholesterol you got? I said, I ain't never eat no cholesterol. But if you'll roll it and fry it, bless God, put it in the skillet. I'll try my best to eat some. Amen. <laughs> Somebody say amen. amen. And there's nothing about us alike. When we got three children, we figured out something, amen. And I'm telling you, are you trying to, hey, what I'm trying to say, what's made us a successful marriage, it's not the fact, it's not the fact that we're alike, it's the fact that we're different. Right. She was here tonight, she'd be somewhere in the back. She'd get here late and leave early and wouldn't speak to three people. <laughs> Amen. I'm going to talk to everybody's here. I open it up and shut it down. Amen. I'm the first of our last to leave. Hey, think about it. This ain't my church. She said, you ain't happy if you ain't down before the janitor. And you ain't happy if you don't stay until they mow the yard. Somebody say amen. That's just me. She don't mind. After 38 years, she got used to it. Praise God, sometimes I've got lunch half eat time I get home on Sunday. But the fact of the matter is, we didn't get all these years. Four, three children, four grandchildren. And I'm telling you, in the body of Christ, what makes us who we are and what we are, it's not that we're all alike. It's that every one of us has different callings and gifts. Amen. You don't need everybody to be a choir director, but have nobody to choir. 
You don't need everybody to be a piano player. They ain't the one in every building, sometimes two, maybe an organ. Hello? Amen. I was preaching in a while back in the church, and they had four grand pianos. Had two on this side, and two on this side. And they had four people playing. Now, that's a rarity. But I'm telling you, the average church does good to have one person on one piano that will come faithful. But the fact of the matter is, we need to understand, our path is ordained by God. If you lead a choir that's got 12, or a choir that's got 1,200, it's ordained by God, and you should help your pastor and be a blessing to your church and realize that the difference that you make in that church is a God difference. Amen. 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 Say this season that. That person that turns on the air conditioning is the most important person that goes to your church in the summer. Amen. 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 That person that puts the toilet paper in the stalls is the second most important person. And you don't even probably know who they are. But I'm telling you, you get to the stall and you need some accommodations and it's not fire and you'll be glad when it is. Amen. 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 I don't mean this ugly, but about anybody can get through a service. Amen. Anybody about it can read a scripture. Anybody can uh, hem haw through a song. Yeah. But bless God, you've got to have that toilet paper. Amen. <laughs> You've got to have that air conditioning. Right. Do, 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 do you understand what I'm telling you? What I'm trying to get through your head is this. It's not what you see that makes your church great. It's what you don't see. It's in people that's praying. It's in people that's behind the scenes working. It's in folk doing that work on the ministry that nobody ever, 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 ever knows about. I tell my folks all the time, I'm one man on this side of the camera. And there's five on the other end. My friend, that five behind me working all of those controls on Sunday, they're a lot more valuable than the mule is behind the pulpit. Anybody can do my part, amen. But there ain't nobody in that building can do that. Amen. God could call anybody to do what He's called me to do. Amen. I'm keenly aware of that. Our path is ordained. I won't say this to you. Your personality is original. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm not a copy, I'm an original. <laughs> As aggravated as you are, there's only one of you. Amen. Amen. Every church don't need two of you. <laughs> Every church sometimes don't even need one of you. Amen. <laughs> but you may not. We need a blister a long time just like we do a blister. There's a lot more thorns than there is roses. But you wouldn't have a rose if you didn't have a thorn. Hello? You work more days than you go on vacation. Hello? You see, your personality is original. Your path is old name. I want you to get this tonight. Your part is very obvious. Hey, listen. If you don't do your part, there'll be somebody else that will have to do your part that God ain't called to do your part. And my friend, it's going to be halfway done. Yeah. I'll say this. Everybody in uh, Brother Steve's church, I don't forget the name of What's the name of your church? What? New Hope. Everybody that goes to New Hope needs to carry their corner and do their part. Everybody that goes to Beulah needs to carry their corner and do their part. Everybody goes to New Life, needs to carry their corner and do their part. They can't nobody sit in your seat. They can't nobody do your part except you. Everybody goes to Tabernacle. Bless God, you need to be at Tabernacle and carry your corner and do your part. Hey, listen, 
I don't care what church you go to, whether it be Holy Cross, uh, whether it be some other church in this county, bless God now, if the Lord has saved you and put you there, then you ought to serve with gladness and serve with joy. And hey, 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 listen to me. It's a sad cry when people stay out of church and the church yeah. is not even affected yeah. by them being gone. Yeah. Look like a circus. 
Marcus has come to town. Nobody, nobody will ever come and hear you preach. Well, that's really encouraging to a young preacher, isn't it? Get that encouraging? That's fine, I'm just blocking that. <laughs> Get that encouragement for young preacher to hear you. Nobody will listen to you preach. Can I tell you something? God be the glory. Out of 365 days a year, I'll probably preach 360. Somewhere nearly every day, twice on Sunday, around the world. 14 countries at least every single day of the year. And what I'm telling you is that guy is worn dirt today and he's either dead in heaven or hell and all that's in God's hands. And I don't know nothing about all that but I'm telling you this. He's done his best to fight me all my life and he's dead and I'm still preaching. Amen. And it ain't got a thing to do with me but it's got something to do with God. Amen. I'm going to tell you, man didn't call me and that ain't going to stop me. Right. Yep. I said this to a guy the other day. I said this to a guy the other day. I said this to a guy the other day. I said it's good, it's good when somebody has something kind to say yep. and encourages you to go on. He takes me back and says, well, what are you going to do if they criticize you? I takes back and I say, it's going to make me go on further. Somebody say it. Man. <laughs> I've been told all my life, I stuttered and I stammered. I was in speech there the first 10 years out of the school probably. Now they can't get me to hug. Somebody say it. <laughs> I, I ran into a, to a, to a, to an old speech therapist I had. When I was in elementary school, she walked up to me and she said, I just wanted to come and hear you, Dr. Siles Morris. She said, I never believed in my Michael Axe to have your education and be able to speak and preach the way you do. She said, I just had to come sit for myself. And she said, you have improved. <laughs> She said I had improved. She didn't come back no more. She just come one night. That's all right. That's all right. But what I'm saying is, my friend, is God has a plan. Yep. God establishes your call. Yep. You may not understand it today, but God is in charge of, of the sparrow that flies yep. and the sparrow that falls. Yep. Amen. Bless the Lord. See, you think that only God, you think that God only orchestrates everything that's lovely. But God also permits those things in our life that breaks us, that brings us close to Him. Can I say this to you tonight? The most blessed songs in this book that we sing out of every Sunday is songs that is written mostly for brokenness. Terry Crosby with blinded eyes wrote, Blessed Assurance. Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory of his eyes. Heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of the Spirit, and lost in his blood. She'd seen more with a blinded eye than those could ever see with the natural. They ask her, they ask her in this life that you could have any miracle. I suppose you want to have your blinded eyes to be open. She said a thousand times no. She said, I can have a miracle in this life. I want to be able to write a thousand more songs to tell the glory of a marvelous Christ. Because when my eyes are open for the first time, 
they'll be opened in His presence. And I'll see Him as He will be. Many years ago, I was in Lighthouse Baptist Church, Pleasant Garden, North Carolina. I was preaching there at the Bible conference with the late Dr. Howell Sightman. He was alive. And he was preaching last, and I was preaching first. We were in that meeting there for three or four days. We were sitting there around the evening meal table one day, and I asked him, I said, Brother Sightman, all the years you've been preaching, can you tell me about one of the most precious encounters with the Lord you've ever had or ever seen or ever experienced? He looked at me and slowly replied, as only Sattler could, and he said, I preside the Lord. Let me tell you about the time I was at Tennessee Temple University. Chattanooga, Tennessee. And he said, I walked in to the large sanctuary. Dr. Lee Robertson was a pastor. For the first time, I heard the song as it was being penned and written by Charles Wagle. Our old man Charles Wagle said at the piano. And he was playing that song and singing that song in that vast auditorium. Nobody there. He didn't even know I was there. And I stood in awe as the glory of God moved upon that man. As he played and filled the words, no one ever cared for me. Like Jesus. There's no other friend so kind as he. It was like there was a radiance of glory and a radiance of heaven. He said, I dare not speak a word. But he said, I was enthralled by the glory and the power and the majesty that was around Charles Wagner. Can I tell you this, my friend, tonight? God has a place for you. God has a call for you. He's got a ministry for you. And the God we serve, He is not limited. He is unlimited. He is omnipotent. He is omniscient. He's a God that saves. He's a God that heals. He's a God that delivers. The fact of the matter is this. He is a God to be believed. Yeah, that's right. Now, here at 8 o'clock on Tuesday night, you can go home and be defeated or you can say, yes, God, yes, sir. I believe you. Yes, that's right. yes, God, I believe your word. Yes, God, I believe I am who you say I am. Yes, God, I believe I can do what you say that I can do. I can be what you say I can be. Yeah. You believe that tonight? Give him a hand. going to come to the piano tonight. The show man is going to come to the drums and they're going to get ready to play the song. And I want to ask you a question tonight. And this is a very serious question. This has been in my heart all day long. I believe there's people here tonight you have never even tapped. You've never ventured to step out. You have never even got to that place. I'm telling you, I believe it's sitting every Sunday morning in our churches, every Sunday morning, good people, that is God's people 
They are bound by fear. They're bound by the what ifs. They're bound by the I can't take a step. Hey, I'm telling you today, if you will dare to believe God, if you will dare to trust Him, you think about it. You were not saved. You never had been saved. You didn't know how to be saved. But you know what happened? You responded by faith to the Word of God. And you know what happened? Jesus saved you. And the same Jesus that saved you when you were young or old or whatever age you were is the same God that can heal a marriage, that can restore a family, that can save a son on drugs, that can put financial blessing and favor back in your life. Is the same God that can put a sweetness in your soul and heaven's touch again on a church. I'm telling you, if you will get where you need to be with God, tabernacle will be better, new hope will be better, pierces will be better, deal will be better. Every church in this building, new life, no matter where you're from, every church will be better. It will. God don't put His Spirit in mortar and brick. Yeah. He puts His Spirit in you. Yeah. Right. Amen. 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 Right. Just as sure as my name is Zach. They spoke here tonight. You need to get over to Jordan tonight. You need to get past the problem. Pastor battle, pastor faith. Sometimes the hardest one in my life for me to forgive is me. Sometimes the hardest person in my life for me to whip and conquer is me. Sometimes I'd be a good guy. Our church would have a great church if it wasn't for the preacher. That's me. Sometimes my wife would have a good husband if it wasn't for me. My children have a good day if it wasn't for me. But we can get out of the way and just let Jesus be Jesus. When he's Jesus, the meal gets put in the fire. When he's Jesus, sinners get saved. When he's Jesus, strength is received. Lives is healed. You ever read in the Bible about that man that Jesus touched twice? You ever read that? You ever read that in the Bible, Brother Steve? Jesus come by and touched the man twice. Only by the Bible he ever touched twice, as far as I know. You read that in the fact. Huh? Touched him twice. He was touched twice. You know why he was touched twice? You know why he was touched twice? He said, I see you. Men as trees walking. The first time he was touched, his sight was restored partially. Hello? Hello? Yes, sir. Anybody here today? I got two and a half hours to ride tonight. I got a hospital visit to make and a, and a hospital thing to do. It'll be one o'clock before I get to bed. Now y'all help me tonight. Hey, man. Yeah. I said, are you with me tonight? Yeah. Hello, brother. All right, when you get here, get the city. You've been here the whole time. Hey, Amen. <laughs> and he opened his eyes partially. I tell you why I believe he opened his eyes partially. I believe he granted him the desire to see. Somebody clean me out, I'll, I may have to run right out of here. You ever let the Lord come by? You begin to see that light. You begin to see the cross. You begin to see the glory of God. Listen, I remember when I was saved by the grace of God, I didn't understand I was His bride. I didn't understand He had it all planned. But I know that now, bless God, my sin has lost the way. I didn't understand all about His ordination. I didn't understand all about His glory. I didn't understand I didn't thrill me and fill me and be with me through the good and the bad. I didn't know none of that. But bless God, I know He was there right then. Amen. And I'm telling you, God, whip my appetite for the impossible.
possible that whet my appetite for the supernatural. And I'm going to tell you, I begin to want him more and more and more and more. And I'm telling you, bless God, my eyes is open today and I can see the impossible. I'm telling you, there's people here right now tonight. These pastors are coming quickly. These pastors come quickly. These pastors leave local churches are coming quicker. You're here tonight. And you need God to not give you a glimmer, but you need God to give you full sight. You need God to give you deliverance. I'm not talking about a little bit. I'm talking about a good one. Bless God, you don't need a creek. You need a river. Amen. Amen. I'm talking about the Holy Ghost overrun. Amen. I guarantee you, if I had a hundred dollar bill in my pocket and I had a one and a hundred, and I walked up to you and as dumb as old T as I said, T, T, if you had a choice and you like to have a one or a hundred, I know which one you get. You get the hundred. Amen. <laughs> Somebody say amen. amen. So let me say this to you, bless God. You can either have all the God or you can have a little bit of God. There's a lot of folks got a little religion. They got just enough religion to be visible. They ain't got enough God and they ain't got enough Holy Ghost to have joy. They ain't never shouted in their life. They ain't never clapped in their life. They ain't never got it went in their life. They just got up. That's all they got. Glad you say. You ain't got much. But I'm telling you, if you'll turn loose and get all the way in, that's going to say something. How many is glad you say you will raise both hands and say, Hallelujah! Yeah. Hallelujah!